This video is one in a series of videos that cover database topics in three themes. We look at Oracle Apex, Application Express for web applications, relational database concepts for designing and building databases, and SQL, the programming language for working with a relational database. If you want to work with the video series, you can go to this URL to get the scripts and handouts. In this video, we are going to take a look at cascading LOVs. That's where a selection from one list of values should determine what you see in a second list of values. We'll also take a look at the difference between a single record form versus an interactive grid when you're using cascading LOVs. We'll briefly take a look at the difference between using a radio group versus a checkbox display option for an LOV. Somebody watching my videos, earlier videos, very nicely pointed out that I might want to reconsider what I showed you in the animal form. So we'll take a look at that based on the differences between radio group and checkbox. If we don't run out of time, if the video doesn't run too long, I'm going to run a script of before update triggers. We need to get those in place. This is another audit column. It will track when a modification has occurred in an existing record. So we have the date created and date modified field in some tables, not all of them. And these columns are referred to as audit columns. You don't typically see audit columns in support tables such as lookup tables. But if the data is central to what happens in that organization, such as animal data, personnel data, transaction data, then we might want to know when records are created and when records are modified. So I'm logged into Apex as one of the developers. I'm logged in as Mark Adams, one of the developers, and I'm in Application Builder. I'll go into our development application, and I'll run the application. I want to look at the animal form for data entry, and I get to that from a report. So I'm going to click on this report, and I could click the pencil if I wanted to look at the form with an existing record or I can go to create to see a blank version of the form. So I'm going to click create and that takes us to this page. Your number might vary. It doesn't really matter. But what I want to happen here is if I select a category of animal then I want this list to reflect that category so that I don't see the entire list of dominant breeds. I want only the breeds related to that particular animal category. So first thing I'm going to do is, is move this dominant breed up here near to category. I'll edit the page and I'll do a drag and drop on dominant breed ID and bring it up here right below category. The design is not to start a new row, so we see here visually in the layout section we'll have animal ID, the primary key, and then we'll have the category and right next to it the dominant breed. So I'll save that change and just take a quick look to show that layout. Again, when we pick feline here, then I don't want to see all the canine related breeds. So I'll come back here to edit. While I have this open, I'm going to right click on application and open up a new tab and go copy the list of value code for the dominant breed. That was generated by the lookup feature in Object Browser. So I'll select that here and copy that code. I don't think I'll need the tab again, so I'll close it, come back to page designer, and I will go to the dominant breed. While I'm here I'll get rid of the ID because that's really not what we display even though that is what we store. I will scroll down till I get to the list of values and I'm going to change from shared component to SQL query. 
and I will add that code that we just copied. I'm going to add some returns to make it a little easier to read. And what I want to do is add a where clause that says where, let me move this over a little bit, where animal category equals whatever is in the P4 underscore category page item. Animal category is a column that we added in the previous video. So it's equal to, and we do a colon before a page item, and that'll be, and it's case sensitive, I'm pretty sure, for category, category, not category ID. So where animal underscore category, which is in this lookup table, is equal to whatever value is in this page item. And I'll verify that this is valid, and it's valid. I'll click OK. Next, I'm going to make an association between this LOV and the parent LOV, if you will. So cascading LOV parent item, I want the P4 underscore category. I click the list and select that. Then I want to submit that value. That means it will be stored in the session so that this query will have access to that value. So I'll click Save, and I'll run that. If I select Bird, then I get an option. I get the list of bird categories or bird breeds. If I select feline, I see feline. And if I select reptile, which I don't have any, I don't see anything. So I'm going to pause the video and populate this form with some data. I want to add a record. So I've added some data, and I'm going to click Create. But actually, before I do that, I want to point out, this is to come back to what someone pointed out on one of my other videos when I was showing you some different display options for list of values. So we have radio group, and if I pick one, if I pick one, I only pick one. I don't get to do multiple selections. However, with a checkbox, which I had forgotten about, with a checkbox, you can actually make more than one selection. So I could say house trained, yes, no, which wouldn't make much sense. But I'm going to do that so we can see how the data is stored in the table. So with a checkbox, you can make multiple selections. And that doesn't really make sense for what we have here. So we'll make an edit on that. But first, let me create the record. And then go back to Page Designer. Go to Object Browser in a new tab. Go to Animals and the data. And I'll do a query. I think I named that animal Lucky. So on the name, I'll put Lucky and run that query. So here we see Lucky. And notice here, house trained, we have yes, no, with a colon between the selections. So you can have multiple values. That's not what we want in this form. It might be something that you want in some of your forms, but in general, I would say multiple selections actually goes against relational database design. You're trying to put more than one value in a single field. That breaks first normal form. That doesn't mean anything to you probably, but it's not a valid practice when you're dealing with a true relational database design. I just wanted to point out, though, that that's the reason why we don't want the checkbox here, because it doesn't make sense to say spade, neutered, yes, no. So I will come back to my form, which I have here, and on house trained, I'll switch from checkbox to the radio group. And I'll do that also for spade, neuter. And I'll run that. Let's see, actually, I might need to edit my data here. Let me edit that and switch that back to just yes. 
and save that. And I've lost that particular animal that would have been lucky. I'll change this display like we have for these up here. I will come to, I think I can, maybe I can do both of these, house trained and spade neuter. Scroll down, list of values, display extra value, no. Display values, no. Null value, no. And I think the column is three for each one of those. Save and run that. And that gets us what we want. So I appreciate somebody pointing that out. So this video isn't too long. I want to do a couple more things here. One is I want to show you what would be the slight difference when you're doing a cascading LOV in an interactive grid versus what we have here with a single form. So I'm going to go to Page Designer and I'm going to create a new page just so I can illustrate this. I'll do this again shortly when we start doing some master detail with animal and activities, for example. So I'm going to do a form and it's going to be an editable interactive grid. I'm going to let Apex, go ahead and number that, and this is going to be Animals Interactive Grid. And I'll click Next, and I'll have it create a menu item, and I'll put that under Animals. I'm going to put this on the table, and I'll select Animals, and I will organize this, manage it by the primary key and create that. I'm not going to assign select lists and make this a very functional form. I just want to illustrate what would be different with the dominant breed when something has been selected for the animal category. What we see here is we don't get the page number that we would get for a page item in a form that looks at each record separately. I'll go ahead and display this and give that a heading of animal ID and I will set category to select list, scroll down, do my shared component and select animal category. Now for dominant breed I will do a select list again and come down and instead of shared component, I'll do the SQL query. In fact, I will come back to I will come back to my application and get another tab going here. And I will look at page four. So I have two page designers. I'm doing this so I can get to the code for this LOV. So for primary or dominant breed, I mean, I'll scroll down and copy that code. Come back over to Page Designer, add that code, but now I don't have the page item P4, so which is the page number. So what I do is I leave the colon and I match the actual column name, which is category here. So I'll click OK and then down here under Cascading LOV, I'll select Category. Re item to submit is Category, and I will save that. So you have a slightly different look. The interactive grid will keep track of the current record that you're working with in the grid. So if I run this, oh, I have the, I'm going to get rid of the, pick the graphic and it's I wouldn't want to display a picture in the interactive grid anyway I don't believe it's not an efficient use of the tabular view so I'll go ahead and get rid of that particular column and now when I'm looking at these and I look at K9 and I have to go into edit mode then I see my options so if I do add row, 
and I select feline and come over here to my dominant breed, then I see that my options are for feline. So just a slight difference in how the code is written in the SQL for the list of values. The last thing I want to do in this video, and it's not really related to anything we've been doing, is I want to run a script that creates the triggers for the before update date and time stamp. It needs to be done as we start modifying some of this data. So I can close down a few things here. And from here, and we want to go to SQL scripts. Now this is going way back to when you first downloaded the scripts and unzipped them somewhere in your computer. You need to go to that folder and find the before update trigger script. I'm going to upload mine. So now I have triggers before update. I need to take a look at that before I run it. And I see the code here for before update on employees, before activities, persons, animals, transactions. I just wanted to make sure that all of those were triggers I want created. So I'm going to run this. And it shows that the triggers were created. I can see that this works if I come back to my application and run it. And let's say we go to animals. And here we are with Lucky, the record I created earlier. The filter is still in effect. I'm going to go in for Lucky and notice that I have the date created, which was today. And I haven't modified anything. I'm going to change the name to Lucy. And I'll do Apply Changes. And I'll come back in and change my filter. Now I see, I can see it here in the report format, that I have a date modified date. So I think in the next video, I'll be creating a dynamic action to do an estimate of the age.